Hello everyone, this is Robert, and in this video I'm going to be doing some hex broaching on some sprockets. That's right, I'm going to take one of these good old classic manual hex brooches and just shove it through the center of this sprocket so that we can get a hex bore. Um, this will hopefully make copperheads drive even better. So um, let's go take a look at these parts and then we'll um, shove this on the 20 ton press and see what happens. So here are a couple of sprockets. These are for the intermediate drive on copperhead. This is the new one that we're going to be broaching, and here is the old one. As you can see on the old one, it has this keyway that runs the length, and that is used to well, transmit power from this to the shaft. But as you can see, it makes the um, overall wall thickness very thin, especially with this um, cutout, which is like for chain clearance. Right there, it is extremely thin and just not enough meat for a heavyweight combat robot. So we need to do away with this and do something different. So we're going to do a hex bore on this. And the way you do a hex bore is with a hex brooch. Um, this is one of two ways to do it. You can do a rotary brooch as well, but this is a hex brooch. Basically what happens is down here you feed this in and then you progressively push it through and it just carves out more and more material until you end up with the hex bore at the end. That's pretty much all there is to it. So let's uh, set this up on the hydraulic press and broach this thing. My hydraulic press is just your standard 20 ton press from Harbor Freight. I think they're, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks, something like that, but it's nothing special. For the actual setup, I'm just using some spare pieces from Copperhead just so that it's stood up in the right arrangement so I have enough room to press the brooch all the way through. And yeah, there's really not that much special about this setup. The broaching process itself is pretty straightforward. You're just uh, cranking down on your pneumatic press until this thing comes out the bottom hole. It's really that simple. Um, I'm adding a lot of oil just to make sure everything is nice and lubricated. Every so often, I'm kind of releasing the tension and rotating it. My press isn't exactly parallel. It is a Harbor Freight. And so I'm just kind of, you know, rotating a little bit just to make sure it is going in straight. It's also not sitting on a level floor, things like that. Um, but other than that, it's just gonna make a little bit of noise and gonna take a little bit of pressure to pull down on the handle but it's really not that bad. I've done much worse things with um, bearings and pressing in motor shafts and stuff like that. It's actually pretty straightforward. So you might be thinking to yourself, wow, this looks really easy. I should get a hex brooch. Well, wait till you see the price of these things. This one is about $350 new. And thankfully I got this one free off of a friend of my dad who was getting rid of a bunch of old machinist stuff and I just grabbed a few of these off of him. Thank you, Roger. That is definitely one way to get these. But if you also look on eBay, there's a bunch on there as well. They're not really all that common. So if you are a little bit patient and do a little bit of waiting and do a little bit of searching, you can generally pick one up for eh, maybe around $50. I took a look on eBay when I made this video, and there's definitely some that you can get for the eh, $50 to $100 range. So keep that in mind if you need to make a hex bore. The only thing that's a little bit sketchy about this is the very, very end. It does kind of want to shoot out the bottom or at least kind of release all of its tension once it's done cutting. So make sure you have a piece of Tupperware or something underneath to catch it when that happens. And here is the finished sprocket. We've got a nice hex bore on it. Um, on the back side, uh, maybe hard to tell, but there's a little bit of squoosh out. It just kind of split it out a little bit. So there's a little bit of burrs right here. I just got to knock those down with some sandpaper. I 3D printed this um, hex shaft because I don't actually have any hex shafts in the shop, um, but this is almost exactly half an inch. And it fits in really snug. It's, it, it's really weird. It fits in, you know, loose but there is just no slip or play whatsoever, which is really cool. So yeah, that's a pretty good fit on there. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. I'm gonna go and do the other five. 
So I only ended up doing four of these. I'm gonna keep the other two just with a plain bore for right now, just in case. Um, I would say overall, this is pretty easy to do. If you already have a hex brooch and a hydraulic press, why not? Um, a hydraulic press is definitely a really good thing to have. Um, it's come in very handy for me over the years. And I would say overall, this is about the same level of effort as doing a keyway. Um, it just takes a hydraulic press instead of an arbor press. So something to keep in mind, but um, this is a much better mechanical fit with a shaft if you obviously have a hex shaft. I would much prefer this over a keyway. So something to consider. Uh, hopefully this will help out um, some of the issues with these sprocket splitting. So um, yeah, I think that's all I got to say about this. Uh, thanks for watching. Check out my Facebook page for any updates to my channel and then check out the Copperhead page for any updates to Copperhead. And I'll see you in the next video. We're going to be playing a lot more with the drive. See you later.